Hello, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, and tonight we're going to talk about the July 2016 CU for SharePoint Server 2016. And the reason I want to dive into this update a little bit is because it actually does something weird. It's going to show up via Windows Update, and so I want to kind of cover that scenario, how you should react to it, how you can figure out what version you're on, and those different uh, things. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to go to my server. Right? So this is my SharePoint server from the multi-server uh, farm that we've built in previous videos. I'm going to hit the start button and I want to uh, type in Windows Update. I'll click on that. And so what you can see here is that my machine's already uh, checked and it's found there's 35 important updates. Yikes. So I'm going to click on that. And what you're going to notice up here at the top is that, you know, while I've got all these Windows Server updates, I also have this one update and it's a security update for Microsoft SharePoint Enterprise Server 2016. KB3115299, blah, 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 blah. So that update is actually the uh, July 2016 QNF update for SharePoint Server 2016. But because it has a security update in it, Microsoft thought it was so important, they're pushing it down via Windows Update. And so it may get applied in your environment without you even knowing it, right? You just come in, you see updates, you go through them. So I kind of want to talk about that for a minute. So the first thing we want to do to do that is we're going to go over here and we're going to open up uh, Central Admin and yes to that and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and figure out what build version our server is currently at before we do anything else so I'm going to go down here to upgrade and migration because that's where patching hides and we're going to click on check product and patch installation status and so you're going to see lots of different numbers here and what you're looking for is the biggest number and so for that you can see it is 4393.1000 um, and if you click on this, you could actually go and look at the KB. So this is telling me these updates were what was applied to get this server to this particular build. Now, one of the tricks that I like to use, as much as it pains me to say, is I'm actually going to go over here and open a new browser window and go to toddclint.com. Oh, that guy's a stinker, but he does a good job of keeping up these updates. And up here we have SharePoint 2016 builds. So if we scroll down, what we're going to be able to do is we can now match the number. So we looked over here, so we had 4393, and if we look on Todd's blog, we'll see that 4393-1000 is the June 2016 cumulative update. So that's been applied to this server previously, and we know from looking over here at the um, updates here, this guy is looking to apply KB3115299, and if we look at Todd's blog, oh, it, it pains me to say it, we can see that KB3115299 is an actual update um, as part of the July 2016 CU. So this kind of helps you connect the dots, figure out what updates you are on and you know what updates are available out there. Also another option you have available is you go out here to, um, back to Central Admin, you can click here for the latest information on updates. You're like, well, why don't you start with this and I'll show you in a second why I don't just start here. And so if we scroll down we'll see here are the latest updates for SharePoint Server 16. And so while they have them listed out here, they don't have the build numbers, they don't have that nice, easy way for us to go, right? I can drill into these KB, KB articles and they'll tell me what build numbers they are and I can kind of get back to it. But I always just use Todd's because it's quick and easy. I can remember toddclint.com and then click on navigation. But whatever way works for you, either way we can see the two different updates. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we need to do two things. One is we're going to apply these updates and we'll let Windows Update do it. I, Being honest, I generally wouldn't do it via Windows Update. I would deselect it, download the EXE and run it manually. But because in this video I'm assuming that some people have gotten trapped but this has happened automatically, I want to kind of talk through that process uh, so you kind of know what you're going to do. But it would be completely acceptable not to install it this way and instead to come over here and um, click on this update download it and then install it that way. We're not going to download it. Um, that would actually be the preferred method but I do want to show what happens if you do it via Windows Update. right? And so then the other piece of that is we're going to need this update. So there's two um, updates that come in most of the CUs. This first one is what we call the language independent file and so this is the one, or sorry, yeah no, language independent. So this file applies to all the binaries regardless what language pack of uh, SharePoint you're running. And then the second one, the MUI one, that one is the language dependent, and so then that one we'll need to download the specific um, one based on our language. So we'll go ahead and download that one so we have it now. So we'll click on this link, 
And right, if you're using the Todd method, you could have also gotten to that KVB right here, right? And Todd covers that language independent and language dependent files. And so the update shows up. It's like, hey, here's your update. The update has a prerequisite. It talks to you about the things that are fixed. And it says, here's how you download it. So we're going to click on the download. And so then here we got to choose our language. And so as you can see, they're all there. But I'm English. So we're going to do download. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, uh, save as. And so what I like to do is I create a folder on my machines, right? C, install, and I created one called July 2016 CU. And so I'm going to put it there. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I build out farms is run everything out of the install folder. So that way if I back up that install folder, I can always, uh, if I need to rebuild a server like, like this one or rebuild the server, whatever, if I just uh, download or restore from backup the install folder and then kind of just double click my way through everything I had in there, I know that I've gotten back to the same type of build level I was before. Okay. So while that runs, um, I'll go ahead and pause the video. That download's finished, so we'll close that out. And then we'll go ahead and close out of our browser window here. Close all tabs. I think I just said window. And so now what I want to do is I'm actually going to apply the Windows updates, right? Remember, this is not normally how you'd apply a CU, but because I think people are going to have this happen to them, I want to walk through what it would look like if you did. So we're going to click on Install. And so then now all those downloads are going to have to happen. And so we, obviously I'm not going to make small talk why that happens. It'll take several minutes. Um, but I do want to talk about up, uh, CUs for just a second while this runs. And the thing I want to talk about is when it comes to CUs, generally speaking, you do not want to apply a cumulative update to SharePoint unless you have a specific reason why, right? You can point to, I have that issue and that particular CU fixes it. Uh, we've seen lots of regressions show up with CUs. Um, you know, we, there's always challenges, and sometimes it might fix four things, but break two things. Um, fortunately for the July 2016 CU, I don't know of any regressions yet, so that's good. Yay, it's been out for like a month, so take that for a grain of salt. Um, but you just want to be very careful about just arbitrarily applying these updates. Now, clearly this one has a security update in it that Microsoft thought was important enough to push down via Windows update. So this is probably a good update for you to go ahead and apply, but um, just keep that in mind only apply updates um, as you have a good reason to. Now with service packs for SharePoint, they go through a much more rigorous testing process and vetting process. Those are a lot more uh, happy-go-lucky. So when those come out, you know, give them a little bit of time for any bugs to kind of expose themselves. But those are, you know, things that you should be looking at applying, you know, as fast as prudent for you because they generally bring new functionality and new, and, you know, updates that have been well tested and are ready for prime time. All right, so I'm going to hit pause while these updates download, and I'll see you in a minute. The updates have finished installing. It took about 20 minutes. I may or may not have wandered off and gotten a uh, adult beverage while that was going on, right? It's news to us administrators installing updates in the middle of the night with uh, our favorite cold beverage. But either way, now that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, restart the PC. Once again, not because this is normally how you deploy a CU, but it's because this is what I think has happened to a lot of you uh, because of the CU being installed. So. I'll hit restart and we'll hit pause while that happens. All right, so that finished up. So we'll go ahead and log into our VM, put in our super secret password. Okay, so we know that the uh, updates now applied, right? We've got one of the two CUs. So we're gonna go ahead and go over to central admin as a first step and take a look at the uh, status of the farm, if you will. So we kind of have an indication of what's going on because like I said, this is what I think's happened to some people. So we're gonna hit start and then type in central admin click yes. Thankfully for you guys there's lots of splicing here so you didn't have to wait the two minutes I had to for central admin to open. All right so I'm gonna click on upgrade migration now and so if we go back here to check product and installation stat, uh, product and patch installation status again you're gonna see that the uh, updates are it's like hey there's an update here and here and so the 4393 one has been superseded by the 4405 um, but we know that there's one more QNOV update we still need to go manually apply, right? There should be two up here for our language pack, and there's only one. So we'll hit back here. If you review the database status, what you're going to see is that the databases are in compatibility range and upgrade is recommended. So what this is saying is, hey, it knows that the bits have been moved up the ladder a little bit, but the databases haven't caught up yet. And so to do the databases, what we're going to do is we're going to run Configuration Wizard, but we're going to wait and do that after we apply the other updates so we kind of have everything in place. Click back again. And if you look and check upgrade status, you should see 
no upgrade jobs ran. I'm just going to point that out because later we're going to come back after everything's done and see an upgrade jobs ran. Okay, so we know where we're at, um, right? This is going to happen to several of you because the update got applied by an administrator who just said, yep, put all the patches on, reboot, boom. So now what we need to do, it's on us because SharePoint doesn't know that that other uh, language dependent file hasn't been installed. So we need to put that on for SharePoint's sake. So I'm going to open my folder here. And we're going to navigate to C, install, and the July 2016 CU. Pay no attention to that August one. That's for a later video. <laughs> and so then here we've got this guy. So we're going to double click on it. And you'll notice that these files are a little bit bigger, right? I mean, it's 400 megs. We'll say yes to this message. Uh, that's because of cumulative update, right? So all the updates since RTM are bundled in here. So that's why you'll see these packages get bigger and bigger and bigger, especially as we get up to that first service pack where they just get to be giant. And then when the service packs roll out, you know, we hope that uh, they're a little better shape. So, all right, you check the licensing, you're good. So we accept those terms and we hit continue. And so while this update installs, we'll go ahead and hit pause again. Um, so I'll see you in a second. And thanks to the magic of pause, just like that, the installation is complete. So we'll click OK. We'll close out of this. So if we go back over to SharePoint and hit refresh. And just like that, it refreshes. We'll say check product and pass installation status. So now we see that our new update is showing up here. Yay! So it's installed. And then if we were to check um, review database status, we're going to get the same message. Hey, we need to do some database upgrades. And finally, if we check the upgrade status itself, there's nothing that's happened here. Cool? All right. So now that all these pieces are in place, all that's left to do is to run the configuration wizard because what that's going to do is it's going to kind of roll all the updates in and force the database update for us. So we'll close out of this. We'll say, right, we'll close out server manager too because it's confusing. We'll say start. We'll type in config. There's the SharePoint configuration wizard, so we'll click on that. Yes, it's safe. Or yes, I really meant to. Or yes, just run the thing because that's why I clicked on it, right? Now the wizard opens up, so we're going to click next. It's going to say, hey, everything's going to shut down. Remember, your server far or your server will be down while this is happening. So there is a video by Microsoft out there that talks about zero downtime patching. This ain't it, right? When we click on this, yes, this is saying, hey, IIS and all that's going to be unavailable, everything will be offline while this runs because it's only one server farm. The only way to have zero downtime patching is to follow the steps those guys call out. And part of that is, is you need a minimum of eight SharePoint servers plus a SQL backend plus a network load balancer. There's a lot of pieces involved. Um, that's not for us today. So say so yes. This is like, hey, everything's good. That's sure. So hey, next. All right, and so this process is going to run. It's going to apply the updated bits across the farm or across the server as necessary, and it's going to go and upgrade all of our databases, both the content databases and service app databases. So I'll hit pause while this runs, and we'll be back in a minute. Thanks to the magic of pause, just like that, everything's done. So we will say finish, and so configuration wizard is done. So then now central administration will open up, and we'll go take a look at all of the uh, patch status things that we looked at before just to kind of confirm everything's done. But the good news is at this point, our farm is truly a uh, July 2016 CU updated farm with all the pieces, no more weirdness, no more confusion. So that's great. All right, so we're gonna click on um, upgrade migration. And so if we check product and patch installation status, you'll see that nothing here has really changed, right? We still have the latest build of 4405. And we know that we can go check uh, Todd's blog to see that that is truly the July 2016 update. And then if we go back, if we say review database status, this is another thumbs up, no action required. So all of the databases have been upgraded. Woohoo! And then finally, if we hit back, the last thing I wanted to show you is if we say check upgrade status, what this is going to do is it's going to show us there's actually an upgrade job out there. So the uh, patches, when they get done applying, they have to go and upgrade the content databases, and so it actually runs an upgrade job. It uses the same tools and mechanisms if you were doing an up, a content database upgrade from 2013. So you get all the same data, you know, um, when did it start, when did it end, so you can see mine took about eight minutes. I had three warnings, you know, I got to 100%. If you're really curious what those three uh, warnings were, you can check this log file. And so it's very verbose. It's going to have all the different things that happen. I've actually checked it before. And so those three warnings all are in regards to uh, databases being skipped because they'd already been updated. So 
you know, nothing to worry about there. But if you're the nervous Nelly type, go check those out for yourself. All right, so that concludes this video. Um, my plan is going forward is I will have an update video for each of the CUs, kind of just walking people through, applying those, any gotchas, any weirdness that I have uh, found. So uh, probably tomorrow, I'm actually going to sit down and make the August 2016 uh, CU update. Thankfully, it does not apply through Windows Update, so no weirdness there. So you'll see just the normal steps of boom and boom. But once again, you don't want to just put it on because it's out. You want to make sure that you have a compelling reason to embrace that. And you generally want to wait with those little uh, guys a little bit longer just to make sure that uh, the Internet hasn't found any issues. Also, remember with SharePoint updates, like so this CU, there is no uninstall, right? If this blew up terribly, there is no pull this back or redo uh, mechanism. I mean, I can go and try and fix and apply, plow my way forward, but I can't just jump back to RTM without going back to my database uh, backups and completely rebuilding the farm, restoring, and that's not something you want to do. So putting CUs, updates, hot fixes, uh, service packs on, those are forever. Those are forward moving steps, so keep that in mind. All right. So I appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed the show, please uh, subscribe to the channel. And as always, you can check me out at Shane's Cows on Twitter, or you can hit me up on uh, www.boldzebras.com, and we can uh, help you out with any of these problems. All right, thanks, and have a great day.